Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So a bunch of people have been asking me to do like a written guide for my Arcmine character and I kind of just really don't want to do that because it takes way too much time for me because I'm retarded. So I'd rather just compile all the stuff together and hopefully you guys can use this video as like a resource guide for you guys. So here's the things we're going to go ahead and cover in this video. Uh, of course, before I actually start, I am going to run uh, this quick shore map to show you guys. But first, really fast, let's go over this. We're going to cover the skill tree leveling guide plus what to use to level. So basically, you know, before you transition, uh, the links you can use, aura setup, how to deal with mana issues, bandits, going over gear uh, plus required uniques, uh, how to survive because we don't really have any leech or regeneration. So that's through like Vol Discipline plus Smoke Mine, um, the interaction between Detonate Mines Totem, why the helmet enchant is so important, trap trigger nodes. Um, there's basically trigger radius on the tree, which affects kind of like our effective off-screening range. Um, your ascendancy plus map mods and then your weapon choice. So let's go ahead and showcase this, showcase it really fast. This character is level 94 in the Hardcore League. And we're going to be running just a simple tier 13 map. I specifically chose this because it's 45% more monster life. It's nothing really that crazy. Um, so let's go ahead and just straight up activate it. Bam. So for general map clearing, the build is actually pretty solid. Oh, let me actually remove display capture. Give me one second. We don't want to do that. All right. So for general map clearing, the build is honestly, it's pretty solid. Um, it is not very tanky, uh, but at the same time, you do honestly kill most things off screen, including beyond mobs and beyond bosses and most of that stuff. If you did want to turn this character into a bossing character, you would have to probably make some adjustments. Obviously, if you're playing softcore, you can get away with a lot more things, you know, but in the hardcore realm, I would recommend getting, I don't know, some type of other defensive mechanic, whether it's like Zealot's Oath or uh, maybe not going low life and just going like maybe like 15, 16k ES, etc. But otherwise, I would just recommend an all entire different character for bossing because, you know, there's so many different things you could be playing instead, like Hawa or low life righteous fire, or I mean, people do like the uh, flame golem summoners. There's an animate weapon. There's a bunch of different things. So for breaches, it's really easy. You literally just drop a detonate mines totem and hit vault discipline, and everything pretty much dies. Like literally, it all it all just dies. Even if like a breach boss were to spawn, it would probably die in like a good couple seconds, assuming you don't die first. Which in that case, you just hit vault discipline. And I guess while we're on the topic of maps, I'll just skip one of the one of the things like right ahead. Map mods, you can pretty much do um, anything. Now, what you need to be careful of is like no regen I wouldn't recommend because then you're kind of forced to running a mana potion. So I would stay away from no regen. Something else I'd recommend staying away from would be like multiple damage mods. Um, so this build's not very good at dealing with like, say for example, minus max, extra lightning, extra fire. You know, you're not running uh, purities, so that's very sketchy for you. So I would definitely stay away from things like that. But at the same time, you could run like Monster Life, Elemental Equilibrium, Reduce Damage from Crits, Enfeeble, if you could even roll that many, uh, you know, tanky mods, and your build would still honestly be okay, uh, which is really nice. Temp Chains is something I'd also kind of stay away from. You don't need to, you can totally run it. It's just Temp Chains is kind of scary because uh, what it does is it actually slows down the rate of you dropping mines, and because it slows down the rate of you dropping mines, it actually, it's kind of sketchy because if you're like in a breach or like a monster goes to attack you, typically I'll like drop a, a mine and just detonate it immediately. But with temp chains, there's like that huge delay between me actually, you know, placing the mine and whatnot. So I would maybe potentially stay away from that, but it's nothing really too alarming. All right, so that's pretty much the map. So let's talk about the basics. Um, in terms of leveling this character, I would just recommend pretty much the same thing I do on any character, which is use a Tabula Rasa, which gives you a free six link right away. And weapon choices to level up with, uh, this is kind of what I used. I start off with a Life Sprig, pretty much any caster does that. You get plus one socketed spells. Uh, you can honestly use whatever you want, use Spark, use Freeze Pulse, it doesn't matter. You're going to go Arc right away if you choose to. Um, so you can dual, weas uh, dual wield these if you want, but I'd recommend swapping to Oxiums. Uh, two Oxiums because you get uh, Cast Speed, which literally does nothing, so I don't even know why I said that because you're playing Mines. But it gives you really, really high crit chance, and it gives you the flat additive damage, which is really good, like, early game. So two Oxiums will take you, honestly, up to 70 if you wanted to. If you didn't want to use Oxiums, I've got another wop, like kind of like weapon swap set up for you, which will deal more damage. Tullborns are insane because they give you flat cold damage to spells 
per power charge, and you can use a Brine Rot uh, flag and use like Rallying Cry, and that will pretty much permanently sustain your power charges, and that basically amplifies Tollborn to be ridiculous. And you can do that right away from level 23, and again, this will take you up until like level 70. You don't have to do anything else with your weapons. If you want to, you know, that's entirely up to you. In terms of your links, you're pretty much going to be using the same links the entire way through. Um, so your core would be Remote Mine, Minefield, Arc. That's like your, your go-to three link. The second um, you start kind of getting a little bit more things, you'd add in like Lightning Penetration uh, and Trap and Mine Damage. I believe Lightning Pen is going to be better than Trap and Mine. And then of course you would put in Increased Critical Strike Supports. Now, in terms of 5 link, 6 link, I would probably leave out Trap and Mine until the last link because you really do need to get Increased Critical Strikes. Because if you don't crit, you're not going to do damage. Um, I mean, you'll still do damage, but not nearly as much as, you know, uh, what you would before. If you look at the top, kind of over there, you can see like a little uh, a little description of my crit multi as well. So, um, in terms of auras, auras is pretty important because uh, Wrath is a multiplier. So that gives you a huge multiplier to your lightning damage. However, you're not going to be using Wrath in the early game. You're pretty much going to use Discipline and just Clarity because the mana cost is going to shit yourself. Uh, Wrath is a huge multiplier. It's 50%. Um, so it's going to completely kill your mana, so you don't honestly use Wrath until like far later on. My helmet has Discipline, Wrath, Enlighten, and Clarity, so I would wait until you can get like an Enlighten 2 or an Enlighten 3 before you even think about using Wrath, and you may even end up waiting until like level 80 or something, which is what I did, and you should still be okay, to be honest. So, the way you're going to deal with your mana, because mana cost is pretty insane, because, you know, 130 cost on Arc, I drop a few mines, it's dead is I spec into Dreamer, which gives us 8% mana and then 25% max mana with the 15% regeneration, which will scale off max mana. And then I also picked up Deep Thoughts for two points, which is the 20% mana and 8% max mana. And then of course, um, this is a really important one, which again, ultimately you would want to swap out of this, but I didn't really feel like spending ridiculous amounts of currency on my character, with the exception of the six link shafts. But um, this is a healthy mine, which basically converts the life modes into mana nodes. So 6% mana, 6% mana, and then 6% mana, 12% mana. And this gives us a huge pool of mana, which is exactly what we're looking for. Because to clear a pack of mobs, we literally just need to drop one arc. So when I'm mapping, it's drop one arc, detonate, one arc, detonate, one arc, detonate, and your mana stays fine the whole way. And then of course, when you get to a boss, you just summon your detonate mines totem, you hit vault clarity, and you just start spamming down mines, and it's no problem. Uh, also, I use a Dream Fragments on my character, which is not mandatory, but it's just a one Alk piece that helps in every type of way. It has Resist, cannot be Frozen, cannot be Chilled, great for CI, another Cold Resist roll, Mana Regen, Max Mana. So all of those are actually like pretty okay. Of course though, you know, a Lightning Damage Crafted Essence Opal Ring with Percentage ES would be significantly better, but you know, I'm not really that interested in going that hard on the character. The Bandits are quite simple, you're just going to do Kill Kill Alira. Um, you don't really need anything in normal or cruel, and Alira gives you that additional power charge, which is really good. So in terms of the gear, I'm just going to kind of hover over everything that I've got. Now remember, you can always just jump into my stream and type exclamation mark profile, and you can just see my character right there. So I'm currently using a dagger. Um, the only reason for a dagger is because it just has the highest crit that you can get. And it's important to roll flat cold onto your dagger. Now you can use a dagger, a wand, a mace, a scepter. It's all kind of irrelevant unless you want to use like shield charge, then stay away from wands. But the reason why you want the cold damage is because that cold damage will scale off your crit multiplier, which will allow you to shatter most white monsters. Pretty much every white monster throughout your time mapping is going to be shattered. And that's important because when you're doing things like breaches and just regular mobs in general, if you shatter a monster, it leaves no corpse. If it leaves no corpse, it cannot be detonated or exploded on. And since you don't really have crazy high fire res, this is kind of something important. Of course, you don't really need it. It's not really required. And when you're running things like tier 15 maps with like Enfeeble and etc., you're not really going to be shattering too often. But it's always just a little additive bonus to get. Um, of course, spell damage is important. Crit chance is important. And then crit multi is always really good as well. So as for the helmet, um, definitely go with an arc has three chains. You don't need it to play the build, obviously, because you can't use this helmet until level 69 but it is a huge advantage. So an example is I drop three mines at a time, right? So each mine would chain seven times. That's seven, 14, 21 chains um, that'll continuously ricochet. Now it needs at least three targets. Arc cannot chain back and forth with two targets. With three targets, it can start chaining back and forth. However, with a helm enchant, it goes from 21 chains to 30. And the reason why is it adds three per mine. 
You multiply three by three, that's nine. Nine plus 21 is 30. So that's 30 chains. Now with the Saboteur Ascendancy, which we'll explain a little bit more, um, Demolition Specialist has a 20% chance to place an additional mine, which can actually mean 40. So this would be 30 chains. This would be 30 chains. This would be 30 chains. Come on, 20%. That would be 30. Come on, don't, don't make me edit. Don't, don't make me do it. Don't make a liar out of me. You piece of shit, do it. You're so close. How, how is this possible? 20% my ass. Okay, now. I swear we have a 20% chance. Okay, there it is. There it is. So you can see there we laid four, um, which each mine that I have currently chains 10 times. So that would be 40 chains, which is actually the base chain of Vault Arc. So we basically have a 20% chance to use Vault Arc every time we kind of cast Capo. Uh, so that's kind of cool as well. So nothing is like crazy, crazy required, but I'm gonna continue going on with the gear. So moving on past the helmet, and of course, this is a CI character slash low life, so everything you want should have as much ES as possible. This is kind of like common knowledge when you're just playing any type of character like this. Uh, my chest piece is a Shavs. Do not need to use a Shavs whatsoever. As you can tell from you know the map clear, the damage is more than fine. Um, instead of using a Shavs, you can just use a high ES chest piece. Um, Literally nothing would change. The only thing is you just don't get pain attunement, which is right here. Instead, you would spec CI, which is right here, and you would drop... Um, I'm currently running Temp Chains on Blasphemy, which you would not run. Um, and I'll talk about that like more towards the low life segment, towards the end. Actually, I guess I could explain it now, but basically, to go low life, you would just reserve one thing on Blood Magic. So I pretty much just have Blood Magic, Blasphemy, Temp. That's it. You can use whatever you want. If you want a more damage, run Assassin's Mark. Um, if you prefer Enfeeble over Temp, you can use Enfeeble. I just like Temp because when you're running in, kind of, or you're running past the mobs, it puts a little barrier of slow. And then, of course, if you freeze a mob, it gets extended by Temp Chains, which is pretty cool. Same thing with Shocking. So, going over the rest of the gear that I have, um, Dream Fragments we covered already. It's just a pretty simple piece. You don't need to use it. It's just very good. It's, it's just very friendly. Um, in terms of gloves, just ES resistance, nothing crazy there. Belt, I would highly recommend a Baited Breath. I know this is a Malagaro's Restraint skin, but you want to use a Baited Breath because it gives increased Energy Shield recharge rate, which is very important for Vault Discipline because that's the only way that you can pretty much recharge your ES unless you like walk out of combat. So if you look at my ES recharge rate right now, you can see it's 4,000 per second. If I take off Baited Breath, it's 2,600. So that's kind of something important. Now you don't have to use it because you are kind of resistance starved. So if you are resistance starved, use like a crift, uh, crafted essence, uh, sorry, a, a crystal belt essence crafted uh, with intelligence or something else if you'd like, uh, just to kind of get your resistances up there. And of course there's other things like Ascend from Flesh and whatnot. My other ring is just simple. It's got Dex, All Res, ES, etc. Uh, presence of Cheyula. If you're not using a Presence of Cheyula, you would use an Eye of Cheyula. Eye of Cheyula is for CI. Presence of Cheyula is for low life. If you want to go extra try hard, you can do something else with stun recovery and, you know, kind of mess around with something else. Uh, this is kind of just what I prefer because it works out really well for me. Your shield, you want to make sure, has pretty decent ES. This is actually on the lower side, but you want to make sure you get spell crit. You need as much crit as you can because, again, your crit is OP, and when you lay three mines down, each mine will roll a different crit chance. Your ultimate goal is to crit on each one, right? That would get you the, the maximum damage you could possibly hit. My boots, I'm currently wearing Rainbow Strides. Ideally, you'd want like 200 plus ES boots. The reasoning for Rainbow Strides is just overall they're not bad, but it has a Labyrinth Enchant on it that's insane. Damage penetrates 8% of enemy elemental resistance if you haven't killed recently. This actually puts me to 91 penetration on my arc, as you can see down here, which is just a pretty awesome amount to have. So now that the gear is covered, I want to actually jump into the flask segment really fast, because flasks are pretty important. I would highly recommend using my current flask setup. The only thing I would replace would be like the Onslaught flask and I guess Quicksilver if you don't want to use a Quicksilver, but I'd really recommend a Quicksilver. So with the Onslaught flask, you could replace this with like uh, a Granite or a Jade um, or pretty much anything really that you wanted. But the reason why I use this is just kind of for clear speed and because movement speed is in a sense survivability, especially when you're playing a build with no leech and you literally just have to run around. So starting with the first one, I've got a diamond of removed bleed. Now you don't have to have the exact affixes on it. Just make sure you have the flask base type. The stats rolled on the flask can just be rolled pretty much anywhere. You just want to make sure you cover the main properties such as bleed, 
Curse Immune, Freeze, Shock, uh, and maybe Ignite if you want to, but I, I don't really care that much about Ignite. Although in this rare instance, since we have a Dream Fragments, we do not have to worry about Freeze or Chill. And if you had Death's Door Boots, you would not have to worry about Bleed. So anyway, and which allows you to use like other flasks as well. So the diamond flask will boost your crit rate. Um, it pretty much allows you to roll your crit rate twice, which is very good because we're not crit rate capped. We're at like 66% or so with flask, or sorry, with um, power charges. So that's really important. Wise Oak gives us 26% um, lightning penetration through flask effect. And our flask effect is located right here. This is really important as well because it actually mitigates um, your lowest resistance. Well, it mitigates damage from it. So since my fire and cold res are even, I reduce 13% fire and cold damage, well I reduce it by that much, and I penetrate 26% lightning, which is really cool because lightning is my highest. Very, very important flask to have. I would say this is definitely one of the main priorities with the build. Uh, Quicksilver I have is just pure movement speed, that's it. My um, silver flask is remove curse, and then my basalt. Basalt is very important because it's physical mitigation, which gets scaled through flask effect. Uh, flask Reflect Kappa, which is 26%. Um, always, honestly, in my opinion, run a Basalt Flask on like any build you ever play. So flasks are pretty much covered. Next up would essentially be, um, I guess, your survivability and whatnot. Because we don't really have any form of leech, it's very important to know that uh, Ark does have a very big range with the mine, well, not mine, yeah, pretty much the mine detonation area nodes, which are located right here. These trap trigger... Trap Trigger Area and Mine Detonation Area. Even though it says Area and Area of Effect, it doesn't mean it's only for AoEs. It means the area, like kind of like the proximity of the mine. So like, say for example, you know, this was a mine and you're walking IRL and you stepped over it and you died, you know, God forbid that were to happen. And say the proximity is like this big, right? The proximity would get increased by those nodes. So for example, even though I'm gonna put my mine all the way over, let's see, here. I'm going to put my mines all the way in this corner, and you'll see that it'll actually shoot from there, which chained all the way down to here. So vice versa here, you'll see it'll kind of just like shoot like crazy. So here we go, and this will hit him from right here. It actually hit both ways. So that's really cool as well. So I'd highly recommend that. And then of course, smoke mine is nice because you pretty much, what I do is I smoke mine and then hit my flasks all at the same time, and that gives me a crazy amount of movement speed. And anytime I need to refresh my flasks, I just do it all at the same time. And I just kind of keep them simultaneous and together. And it doesn't really feel very inconsistent at all because since we have mine laying speed, smoke mine has dropped pretty quickly. All right. The next up thing would be the detonate mines totem, which uh, you can see kind of right here. And I'm going to explain a little bit of how the detonate mines totem works. You really don't need to use this thing very often. It's pretty much just for single target and like breaches is another example. Um, well, this is a really weird layout. But essentially, instead of me having to press D like this, it would do it for you. And normally that doesn't matter. But when you're doing things like bosses where, you know, you're, you just need to keep chucking down mines, you cannot throw a mine down and detonate it at the same time. So that's what the spell totem does. So if I put the totem down now, right, I'll put this hand up. When I, deton when I drop a mine, it'll detonate it. And it'll just continuously do that, which is great for breaches. The only thing important to know is that this mine does not go off my, like, my radius. Meaning if I drop it here, it's not going to detonate. Okay, I don't know why I did that. Um, what it's supposed to do is basically, it's based off the totem. So, like, when the monster walks within the range of the totem, the mine will detonate. So this will detonate. But it's not, see how it doesn't hit anything, though? Well, I mean, it can't now because it's over there. So you don't, you don't drop the mines in front of you, um... Or I guess you do drop them in front of you, but you just have to make sure you be aware of the position of your totem, I guess is the easier way to say it. Because your totem needs to be within activation range for your mines to detonate. And this is like a, a really simple thing, but and you'll you'll catch on like immediately, so don't really have to worry too much about it. Alright. Next up would be our ascendancy. I would highly recommend Septor for this. You can play like Assassin if you want more single target, but for general map clearing and whatnot, I'd highly recommend Sad. And you don't even need to do Uber Lab, because I fucking hate Uber Lab, so I didn't even bother doing it. So essentially, you're gonna go ahead and pick a Bomb Specialist, which literally does nothing for you, but Demolition Specialist does the world for you. It gives you arming speed. It gives you arming speed, it gives you uh, increased damage if you've detonated recently, it gives you mine laying speed if you've detonated recently, 
and then it gives you a chance at dropping an additional mine, which is basically a multiplier, right? It's almost like half a support gem. And then you get Explosive Expert, which gives 10% penetration. Now, the reason why the mine, the mine arming speed is important is there's no other way to acquire that stat in the entire game. And what it does is when you put down a mine on the floor, right? There's the delay time between you dropping the mine and then the mine arming. So you have to drop the mine on the floor, and then while the mine is on the floor, the mine has to arm. A mine cannot be detonated unless it's been armed. Meaning the only way for you to increase that, that efficiency, that speed, is to go sab. So that's kind of why I prefer to go sab, because it just adds another layer of kind of just consistency to the build that I really prefer. Um, I guess really there's not too much else to talk about with the character. I can kind of go over my jewels really fast. I would highly recommend using a healthy mind up until you have like GG gear. This is something that's super, super good um, and really just adds that mono region that you kind of need. My character is currently running on 149 per second and I still can't sustain it, but I can sustain it enough to map. Like I don't really need more than this because you would vault clarity for single target. But your jewels, uh, you pretty much just want crit multi. Crit multi, ES, and mine laying speed. Those are like the three most important stats. If you feel you have enough mine laying speed, you don't really need to get any more. But you'd want things like global crit multi, crit multi with spells, crit multi with lightning damage. Things like that are super, super good for your build. All right, I would say the last thing to do is kind of build the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of follow, follow along my current outline. And you guys can kind of see uh, for yourself kind of what I did. So... To start off, we're going to go ahead and just get the Ellie damage, pick up Trickery, and we're going to pick up life wherever we go. So I pretty much don't really level my characters as life anymore because you can go CI at level 53. So that's what I do with my builds because you can use like Ascent from Flash and Rainbow Strides and a bunch of other stuff. So basically we're going to start Ellie damage, grab Trickery, grab your adjacent life, pick up Assassination, Cold Hearted Calculation. Nullification is really good because you get the All Res and All Res is super good for leveling. Uh, move up, grab Sab, move across this way, move up, grab Volatile Mine so you have the instant detonation, move across, grab more life if you feel like it, move across, grab your Clever Construction and your High Explosives, these are super, super important, and then pick up your Trap Trigger uh, Detonation Radius. If you don't feel like getting this early, you don't really have to worry about it. I would save Jewels as well for later. Um, Doomcast is a super, super good damage, so whenever you decide to go crit, or if your leveling is crit, obviously pick it up because it's adjacent. You want to move across. Blast Cascade is really good because this allows you to sustain your power charges. If you want to use Tullborn early and you don't want to use the Brine Rot Shield, then you can actually pick this up whenever you want. Um, Blast Cascade, this fucking knocking dude. They're Sorry, they're like rebuilding an apartment next door, so <laughs> kind of sucks. But Blast Cascade is pretty much the only way I support my power charges, and it works out pretty well for me. Um, yeah, next up we're going to come down, grab your Destructive Apparatus because it gives you your laying speed. Uh, if you're CI already, then start picking up your CI nodes or your ES nodes here. Move across through here. Um, you want to go ahead and pick up Annihilation. And then, of course, this is pretty much done with the build. You would just fill up ES nodes wherever you want. It's very, very easy, very self-explanatory. Um, there's not really much traveling. You literally can see everything on one screen because of just how, how simple the build is, I guess you could say. Uh, but it's super, super effective, and I really liked it. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, I don't really know what else to add for the build. I had a lot of fun with it, like I said. Um, I'm pretty much done with it. I, I may level it like one more level to 95, but there's really not much else for me to do with the league. And I know people are asking about my microtransactions, so I'm going to just cover all my microtransactions for you guys as well. I've got a uh, Seraph Dagger, which you can't really see that much, but it has the purple lightning weapon effect. I've got the Cerulean Seraph Helmet with the Arcane Halo. I have my Breach Spawn Cloak on the back that you can see with the Cerulean Seraph that you can see here. This is a Saffles Frame skin on my shield. My boots are Cerulean Seraph with the Breach Footprints, so you can see the flippy floppies here with the Breach Footprints. My gloves, I have Arcane Gloves because I don't know where my Cerulean Skin Gloves are. My belt, I'm using a Malagaros, which has one of the bubbles. And then I've got the Stormcaller character skin, which is the butt that you see here, which is another bubble. And then on top of that, I've got the Discipline Force Field, which is the third bubble on the character. And I guess you could say for the last thing, because people are going to ask for quality gems, everything is pretty much the same. I mean, Remote Mind gives mine laying speed, so definitely get mine laying speed. 
Minefield is detonation area, so these two would be like core priorities. Arc doesn't do anything, you don't even need a quality arc. And then Lightning Pen, Trap and Mine damage, and Increase Crit are pretty much all like the same thing. It's just like a little bit of damage and a little bit of crit. Nothing like super, super required because there's no double dipping values. Um, and then Vol Gems. I simply use Vol Discipline, Vol Clarity, and I have no need to use any other Vol skills. So I apologize, this was kind of like an extended guide, but this pretty much covers everything for the build. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to go be playing some Path of Diablo later on the stream, so if you guys want to check that out, feel free to hop in. Anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. So thanks for watching, and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.